or not? Yes. Um, I have one. So I think it's not a simple question by any means, but it's one that we probably don't have a whole, each of us probably doesn't have a whole lot to say, so I, I'll use this. Uh, it is true or false. Uh, Paul endorsed being baptized for the dead in 1 Corinthians 15.29. Hmm. Okay. Well, I'll go first. I uh, know uh, the answer is absolutely false, certainly false. Uh, he's not endorsing it. He's just referring to the people that do it. He's, he's saying this is being done. So if, 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 you're, if you're someone that thinks that you can baptize for the dead, then you certainly have to uh, believe, I, I think, uh, you have to understand about the, the resurrection is real. I, I think it's the resurrection that's connected to that. I can't remember for sure. So he's not really endorsing it or teaching it. He's just recognizing that somebody, some of people believe that, and therefore you need to, you should, why couldn't you also believe this at least? Um, okay, uh, who wants to go next? I'll just quickly say, uh, yeah, I second that false. I mean, you know, everybody, uh, it's kind of like uh, there's not it was before these old Twitter disclaimers, you know, uh, uh, retweet is, you know, doesn't necessitate endorsement or whatever. It's the same thing. A lot of times people will point to things in scripture that it's just they're just referring to something, not endorsing it, not approving it. And that's why the context is really important. But um, uh, this is how people try to slip little things by, you know, because he said it happens. That must mean that it's good. And, you know, uh, I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure if uh, if if it were a biblical principle, we might have heard more about it other than this offhanded reference to it as if it was something other people do, like not something that God actually instructed or ever explained in the first place. So where did they even get it? <laughs> you know, where did they even get it from? That should be a clue. So. Hey, all right, uh, Sister Heather. This was actually my question, so I will oh. let Ben oh. go. All right, go ahead, Ben. It. Um, okay, well, let me read the verse first of all. Um, first Corinthians 15 9. It is, you're right, uh, Luke, in the context of the resurrection. Um, and let me just pull up here. I had it here a second ago. Yeah, so Paul says, uh, Now, otherwise, what will they do who are baptized? I'm sorry, let me read it over again. First Corinthians 15. Chapter 15, verse 29. Otherwise, what will they do who are baptized for the dead if the dead do not rise at all? Why then are they baptized for the dead? Um, I believe this is a key verse used by Mormons, actually. Because uh, I think they do baptize the dead. In fact, I think they are really, we're behind a ton of uh, early science in the human genome because they wanted to find out who their relatives were uh, so they could baptize the dead. Uh, I believe that was what was that was. I've heard. I've heard that. I don't know how true it is, but I've, I've definitely heard that. Um, and uh, what you said, what you guys said about that, uh, what Angel and Luke said, could be very well be true. Uh, I don't know if that's the case. Um, it also, when I read it, the first thing that came to my mind was, um, again, you know, we were baptized into Christ, and so in that sense, we were baptized into His death, and so. Paul could be using it in that in that respect, you know, baptizing. Uh, again, I think it, when you hear the word "baptize" in the Bible, it doesn't necessarily mean water is involved at all. In fact, I think you need to ring the word out in your mind. It, it means to be immersed with or I fully identified with, essentially. Um, and so, again, we we are fully identified with Christ in his in, in his both his uh, death and his resurrection. Um, so, if Christ didn't, if Christ didn't raise isn't raised, then we we aren't raised. Uh, and, and that's part of Paul's argument. And uh, so he could be referring to that. And I, I, I saw an allusion, perhaps, into another kind of puzzling passage in First Peter 4, where Peter says, Therefore, uh, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind, for he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. And he goes on to talk about, you know, uh, how these Peter's people he's writing to are being uh, spoken evil of because they're no longer partaking in the sins they once did. And um, and so in that sense, uh, Paul later says, uh, I'm sorry, Peter later says, um, uh, he says, he, he says, for this reason, the gospel was preached to those who are dead, 
that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but to live according to God in the spirit. So it's a kind of puzzling. There's a lot of debate. Okay, what does he mean by, for this reason, the gospel was preached to those who are dead? Well, who's he referring to? He's talking about people who were once dead in trespasses and sins, but now are alive to God? Or is he referring to those who are unbelievers and uh, still unbelievers, still dead in their trespasses and sins? And I think there's probably an aspect of both. Um, you know, I, I see it as the gospel being preached to them. Uh, and, you know, while they were alive, they were being ju judged according to the flesh. So just like Jesus, when he when he uh, was alive, alive, when it talks about since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, our results also in the same mind, for he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. By meaning that, he means, okay, since Christ died and he suffered in the flesh, not that he ever sinned, but he he ceased suffering from sinners, you know, people who are persecuting him. And so in the same way, we have, should have that same mind that not only should we um, uh, not really take any heed to what unbelievers say, but uh, we also should be done with sin. We shouldn't be partaking uh, of it in, in anymore um, because we died to it. And so in that sense, we should arm ourselves with the idea that we also have ceased from sin because we died with Christ. And so in that sense, uh, he could be using baptized for the dead um, with respect to uh, just being dead to, dead to your former self. Uh, so it, it is a puzzling passage, but I, I definitely don't believe it. Any, there's no way that, uh, well, first of all, salt, we know that water baptism has doesn't bring eternal salvation whatsoever. It's just an, an outward expression of an inward reality and um, has no dependency or uh, bearing on one's eternal salvation whatsoever. And so uh, it would be quite a leap to say that uh, Paul's teaching uh, that dead people who were never, who had their, who had their chance to believe and whether they did or not, that it's come, it's, 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 it's a foregone conclusion. They're either with Christ or they're now uh, under condemnation. Uh, baptized, water baptizing is not going to uh, make one iota of difference to their eternal reality. So, All right, thank you. Okay, uh, Sister Heather. All right, um, I just want to say, first of all, that I very much enjoy the wisdom of everybody on here. I, I really do. And that being said, that is the reason this question was submitted. Um, and th I think that this is a really good lesson for all of us to learn, um, especially if we're, we're a little bit newer in our study of the scripture. Um, when we have a question, we see a verse that we don't understand. It is so important because I didn't understand this verse, which is why I asked the question. Um, when we have a question we don't understand, it's so important to go to our brothers and sisters in Christ who have been saved longer, who have an understanding of what the word says and who can explain it to us. Because my insight on this subject is. I think you guys hit the nail on the head. I didn't understand it before tonight. So, um...